How to spot red flags within depression. With the recent passing of Liam Payne, this is a tragic situation, but a situation that is not isolated. There are many celebrities and many people all over the world that suffer from mental health, depression, etc. The reason it goes unchecked is because at some level they don't feel comfortable being able to share exactly how they feel and at some level they feel they're going to be judged. So if you can cultivate an understanding around what they're going through and create a non-judgmental approach to this, it's much easier for people to share how they're feeling. And typically, one in four people, according to mind, will have a mental health anxiety issue. More commonly with men, because men are more uncomfortable expressing their emotions. It's not lack of services, it's lack of understanding. So in today's session, I hope that by understanding the red flags, that you can start to understand more about this process. Now, before we get into it, I'm someone that used to have depression when I was much younger. I tried to jump out in front of a train when I was younger, got pulled back and got a second chance. I've trained over 20,000 coaches to be able to understand trauma. I'm currently doing my PhD research on how to remove emotional triggers. So I'm well adverse to be able to help you in understanding depression. Now, being someone that used to have it, I don't believe that actual depression, the label of it, helps anyone. If you dissolve the label and look at what are the habits that that person is doing to actually cultivate that, then it's gonna set them free. So I'm not having a go at anyone that is on antidepressants or anything like that, but actually looking at the source of what are the behaviors that that person is doing that's creating the outcome will actually resolve it in a much deeper level. So if we look at Liam's situation, I'm gonna take you through the three core red flags. Number one, they're not acting the way that they normally act. It might be arguments more consistently or ego and having to prove themselves or they're not happy at the same level that they used to be. They're not happy-go-lucky or they seem to be full of anxiety or stressed or withdrawn. Number one, some sort of change in behavior and it's over a period of time. The difference between depression and sadness is depression is a much longer sort of experience that someone will go through versus sadness tends to be around one individual event. Whereas depression is stacked up over a period of time and they start to dull within themselves and their light kind of switches off. And you can kind of tell when someone's kind of lost hope, like it's all monotonous and it's all the same and their language is all the same and it's a huge red flag. You can see when someone is not particularly having a great time in life. And then online, there's lots of videos where people say, oh, you can't tell the signals. And there's lots of videos where they show a celebrity one minute and then the next minute. But how someone is externally in the world versus how they are on their own is what we need to look at. And we can all put a brave face on, but those around that person will know and see the truth in their behavior. You can't hide it. So it's not something that people can hide away from. If there's a distinct difference in their behavior, that's something to definitely look into. And number two, excessive coping mechanisms. I'll put a chart here on what coping mechanisms tend to be. And of course, the more unhealthy they are for the body, then of course, the more damage they do to the body. And then it's harder to self-regulate. And then it becomes a vicious cycle because when someone isn't getting good sleep, they're not exercising consistently, they're not eating well, you know, they're taking narcotics or drugs, etc. They start to become completely deprived of all of the good things in life that make them feel good. I mean, if you reverse engineer it, if you take away someone's sleep, if you give them bad nutrition, if you run them down emotionally, if you load them up with loads of tasks, if you overwhelm them with loads of things to do, then that person is not going to be living their best life. They're not going to be ecstatically experiencing life at the highest level versus if that person gets eight hours of sleep. I mean, how do you feel with like zero sleep? It's not good. I mean, if I have six to five hours, I notice the difference versus eight hours. And so, especially as we get older, the importance of managing your emotional well-being becomes more important because you become more fragile and you become more sensitive to these things. So understanding what are good mechanisms to manage emotional stress versus what are negative is a key component there. At number three, lack of self-care and lack of social interaction. Kind of easy to spot at this stage, but it's a lack of personal hygiene, avoiding social interactions, changing in sleeping patterns, maybe loads of sleep or no sleep at all, significant changes in appetite, either eating too much or not eating enough. These might seem small, but these are big indicators that something may be wrong. With these three flags, if you pick these up, I promise you, you'll have a much deeper understanding to how someone's actually doing. Then it's taking the time 
to ask someone, are they actually okay? Creating a safe space so that they can actually share their emotions and share how they're feeling without creating judgment. People always say you need to create a safe space and just by saying that doesn't mean you create a safe space. A safe space is created through non-judgment. That allows people to express their emotions. Over all the years that I've been helping clients, the reason that people do not express how they feel is because they don't feel that they can because they feel judged at some level. I hope this video can help you or someone that you love. If you are someone that wants to level up your skills and become a certified coach because of the nature of this video, we're giving it completely away for free. You can click the link, you can join our certification coaching program, learn how to be a transformational expert coach in your niche, transform your own mind, and also help other people along the way. I look forward to seeing you soon.